I'm really happy and excited to be here today. For me, it's like uh, coming back home because I was born and raised uh, very few kilometers from here. And uh, when Andrea called me to speak today, I just booked a flight the day after, and uh, here we go. So today, everything, actually, I made my college year. So in this city, started my professional life. And at that moment, uh, I wasn't really engaging what I was doing, what I was studying. You know, the time of the college is more the time of having fun with your friend, going out, party hard. But along the way, I found my, I found my way and my path. Today, I like to define myself as a generational translator. But uh, what do I translate? I translate uh, this. Basically, the difference of language between the younger generation, millennials, and the previous one. Today, uh, all the companies around the planet are struggling and investing tons of money in order to understand how to engage this new generation inside their organization and how to catch them as a client. And uh, before everything, we need to define who is a millennial. Millennial is a person who was born uh, between 1982 and 2004. Is there any millennial here in the audience? One, two, mm, a lot. And is there anyone else that has a brother or sister that, uh, or kids that are millennials? Can I see the hands up? Cool. It seems that the topic today will be pretty interesting to many of you. But who decides when uh, a new generation starts uh, and the previous one ends? Basically, to explain, to answer to this question, we need to introduce this concept that is a collective memory. Basically, all the important events that happened during our developing age contributed to shape uh, our memories, our personalities, and our values, what we believe in. So all the most important events, for example, think about uh, the killings of the Kennedys or uh, the men on the moon, or think about the big wars. Whoever experienced uh, that kind of sensation living into a war, obviously, he will never want to come back in the same, uh, in the same moment. But uh, which was the disruptive innovation that basically shaped the, the millennial generation? Any idea? What happened so strong uh, between uh, 1982 and 2004 that shaped uh, the shaped millennial generation? Internet. Internet, for sure. So all the information in one click. Think about this generation grew up with, uh, with Internet, grew up with uh, all the... Uh, Hollywood movies like Star Wars, where the, uh, the main characters were trying to save the planet using technology, and uh, with video games. Video games pushed this generation to play and to take in risks. So, if we summarize how the old generation used to call millennials, these are the three main things. Basically, they say that they are self-centered, so they are egocentric. They say that they are entitled. So they want to speak even when uh, it should not be the right moment. And they are outspoken. So they feel that they have the right always to say their opinion. But uh, it always happened along the history that uh, the previous generation had something to complain about of the newer one, or the newer one uh, was feeling that uh, they were misunderstood from the previous one. So are we in front uh, to the common generational fight, or is there something more behind it? We will try to answer to this question along, uh, along this talk. But before, we need to figure out which are the main differences between uh, the new generation, millennials, and the older one. For example, when uh, millennials enter into the market, uh, into the business environment, uh, they would like to have balance between uh, private and work life. And they find uh, the classical old approach that says, uh, work the most that you can. So your job is your life. And on the other side, they would like to have access to information. So immediate access to information. And they find uh, divisions and uh, closed-door policies. They want, uh, for example, to work for a purpose, for a reason. They would like to be intrinsic motivated. And they find uh, just uh, external rewards, like money, status, and uh, titles. Last, but most important, they really would like to impact the planet. They want to see that what they're doing is uh, making the difference in this world. and. Uh, they work into a business environment where they have no feedbacks. They really cannot see if uh, what they are doing is something useful or not. But is this something that only the millennial wants, or should we all want the same things? But when has been built this business environment as we know it? We need to go back in time, actually for a lot, 
more than 150 years ago with industrial revolution. Basically today, the world as we know it has been built more than 100 years ago. When, uh, to remind you, Henry Ford was starting to substitute horses with cars. Today we are still playing life with the same old rules. And uh, you know another thing that uh, has been created at the same time, another institution that has been created at the same time, like business? Any idea? Business and, I'm going to tell you, education. Think about business and education. Is there anything else? We could talk about uh, business and education probably for three full days. And about uh, how many things don't work about business and education. And, uh, for example, they both are completely obsessed by performance, productivity and hierarchic control. And this is not anymore the right path for us. So the result, the effect of everything, is that 87% uh, of all the workforce is not engaged. They don't like what they're doing. And 89% uh, don't want to have the classical job between uh, 9 in the morning to 5 in the afternoon. And 73% uh, of millennials confess that they spend online more than three hours during the working hours. Basically, to summarize, the nine people out of ten hate what they're doing every day. This is a big thing. And uh, in real life, this is the, the effect. They are dissatisfied. They are escaping in both private and professional life. But the big difference between the older generation and the millennials is that the older generation got used to this. It has always been like that. So they are willing to have trade-offs. They are living. But for millennials, this is different. They, have, uh, they are not willing to give up. They will ask for what they want uh, forever until they don't get it. And this is the big difference. Now, I really want to do my part of the job. So let's translate uh, the language between millennials and between the older generation. People say that they are self-centered. I say that they believe in aligning private life and passions with their working life. People say that they are entitled. I just say they want to contribute from day one. They want to see the effect of what they are doing from the day one. They are ready. And uh, people say that they are outspoken. But in reality, they believe that uh, they are all equal, all connected. Online, for example, it doesn't really matter if you are a college student or you are a CEO of a one billion dollar revenue company. It's all the same. There are no titles online. So at this moment, is, uh, the result is that we are wasting time and resources. We have uh, the generation that in the history, studies show us that in the history, millennials have uh, the highest level of uh, ethic. They really care about society, they really care about environment, they really care about the world where they live in. And they are eager to contribute. They want to fight every day to impact this planet in a positive way. And on the other side, they are incredibly optimistic. They really, they can't wait to do something good. And uh, even the older part of this generation, they are 30, 35 years old, they wake up every day and they are optimistic. They are not sick of life. So everyone today, from many directions, is heading to the same point. We saw so many TED Talk where uh, we, we heard talking about uh, behavioral science, gamification, cognitive uh, psychology, then Ariely, then Pink, uh, then Robinson. Christian Zoli, a couple of years ago, here on the same stage, was talking about uh, having fun and the flow. So basically, having fun while you're working, because you're going to have a better quality of life. Everyone is heading to the same point. So at uh, this moment is uh, the moment to answer to the most important question today. Are we in front of the classical generational fight? The answer is no. Absolutely no. Actually, millennials, they just want to don't waste time. They want to pursue their dream. They want to be engaged in what they are doing. They want to pursue their happiness in their life. And actually, these are things that every one of us should want. Every one of us. What is true for millennials is true also for the older generations. So everyone should put apart their egos, their bias, and just think millennial. My message for you today is think 
millennials because they are right. <laughs> they are absolutely right and they will never give up. Every one of us can think at the same way. And uh, I know that there will be probably many of you that are thinking, mm, probably I'm too old because I grew up in a different world. I'm, uh, I got used to different things. So I want to tell you about uh, a brief story that happened to me not more than a couple of months ago. I met this guy. We were having breakfast in, uh, in Paris. I don't know if you know him. Basically, it's Gene Landrum. And uh, he founded one of the biggest food chain in the US, billions dollar revenue, really big deal in the US. And this guy, today is in his uh, 70s, we were talking, he was telling me about what he did in his life, I was uh, telling him what we do in our company, and at a certain moment he stood up and he said, uh, wow, I'm a millennial, I'm a millennial, I'm not too old, I always thought like this. And uh, he was telling me when, uh, when he was young he had a dream, and he was trying to build his dreams, and everyone around him was telling him, Gene, you're nuts, you will never do it. This is impossible. Obviously, he didn't listen. He did it anyway. He uh, pursued his dreams, and at the end, he got it. Today, in the history actually, he built uh, the place where every kid in the US wants to spend his most important day, his birthday. Every kid in the US has uh, a little bit of happiness due to this guy that never gave up. And uh, Gene is a uh, almost, I think, 70s, around his 70s, and uh, it's amazing. And uh, the message is, uh, millennial is not an age, it's a mindset. Thank you.